Hey guys, just got into Bendaird. This is the bus station. Right across the street from the peacekeeping forces here. Mm. A lot more trouble at the border this time. Not so much from the actual border guards, but from uh, the people I was in line with. Because there were about mm, 30 people in a 10 person building. And there was no line. And I just happened to be lucky enough to only wait about five minutes instead of 30 like everyone else. Boy, did I have people yelling at me. But I don't speak Russian or Romanian, so I mostly just smiled and said thank you. Because <sighs> you gotta be polite, right? Ricky travels the road to Transnistria, Bulgaria. Romania, Moldova. Oh, it's right there, that little guy, Transnistria! Boom! Chapter 10, Bender Transnistria, the last bus. By the way, all the trouble I had at the border, the driver loved me because they thought it would take me forever because I'm an American. No, I was kick-ass, he laughed, gave me a pat on the butt, upper butt, back area, I fresh. The other thing, the buses aren't running that often today. We only have about three or four hours to meet and greet and drink. I think we could do it, what do you think? The great part about both Transnistria and Moldova and some countries that we've gone through, you might know, there's just grape vines everywhere, growing grapes, just awesome. So, maybe we should go try some juice of these grapes. By which I mean wine. Yeah. I've noticed that we public rose gardens are actually quite popular here. It's really nice. Both here and in uh, Tiraspol. Pretty sweet. A kilometer or two later, or an hour or two of Rick talking to the camera later, I've seen some cool stuff here. It's not the biggest city. Some of the other stuff is guarded by the military, so I don't want to get too close to it. However, I am told that the coolest bar hangout place is called Cafe. Just gotta find it through this rose garden. I told you about the rose garden. I told you. I did. Uh-huh. Who was right, Ricky? Who was? Say it, Ricky. Yeah. I can read that first word. It's memorial, which is apt because this is the eternal flame for those who died in the war in 1992. It's right over here. <laughs> There's a wedding going on. Oh, they're getting out here to take pictures. Bender was a very volatile area during the war because it lay on the western side of the Dniester River and so experienced some of the fiercest fighting. Between 1,643 and 2,237 people were killed, of which civilians on both sides made up of between 45 and 61 percent of the casualties. You know what? Those people that uh, I thought were going to take pictures in front of the flame in the tank, it's not true. They were going to ring the bell under that cross that you saw. Let's go to the center of town now. An important point in my mind is that civilians probably did make up a majority of the casualties during the war. However, the most important point is that there is no longer violent conflict. Political conflict is a much better alternative. And I found that in Bender, as in the rest of Transnistria, that daily life was comfortable and normal relative to what it could be. People laughed, ate, and drank. And besides the somewhat heavy army presence, life in Bender seemed like that of life in many of the places I had visited earlier on my trip. So after exploring through the morning, I found a nice park to have my lunch. It's lunchtime. What we got? We got some brown bread, we got some salami, and we got some cheese. And I'm excited like a fighter pilot. I'm also hot as a pot of tea. It's hot out here, so I got me some water too. Katya tells me that this is the classic staple bread of the old USSR. So I'm pretty pumped to try it. Let's chow down. A sandwich or two later, or an hour or two of Rick stuffing his face with food later. Lennon was a smart looking fellow, wasn't he? Yeah, it was. I would have taken him out to a sweet club, wine and dined him, picked his brain for specks of love. Yeah, but anyway, he was a good looking dude, wasn't he? I admit it when I see a good looking dude. Oh, there's a mirror. Oh, there's a good looking dude. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting delirious. I haven't talked to anyone for a while. I've been walking for a really long time and all the blood's in my stomach digesting when I'm really hot. I'm pretty sure one dude was actually thought with me. Which they say they'll do if you take too many photos. Or sweet videos. Ah, oh, sweet video, dude. Oh, thank you. I don't think you're following me anymore. He just came down and sat where I was eating my food, but like a couple benches down, and then stared at me for a long time. Then anytime I looked, he looked away, and then I got up, he got up, I walked, he walked. So then I kind of walked in a circle. Now I'm on my way again. Let's hope uh, it's all groovy. Kind of freaking me out talking about it though. Let's go hide in that cafe. I'm sorry, let's go hide in cafe. The coolest bar cafe around. Bender. 
I spent the last hours of my time in Transnistria sipping Russian beer and Transnistrian cognac, watching ruminous old men sit in the rose gardens, feeding the cats that came up to me, and speaking with the servers at cafe who were pretty bored because I was their only customer until a JCC member came in for a few after work pints. I made my way back to the bus station and saddled up with the other men waiting for the last vehicle to Chisinau, biding my time by exploring the abandoned 1960s Soviet terminal. Making my way through southeastern Europe to Transnistria was the most wonderful experience. The people that I met, connected with, and reconnected with were amazing. I was sad that this month of traveling was over, and sadder still to leave Transnistria, Moldova, Romania, and Bulgaria behind. And sad as most to leave my friends. But I do have the memories. <laughs> At least some of them. Pope Paul VI said that somebody ought to tell us, right at the start of our lives, that we are dying. Then we might live life to the limit every minute of every day. Do it, I say. Whatever you want to do, do it now. I waited for the last bus. If there were lightning, there'd be thunder, and I'd let you know. But it's just firecrackers making lights as they explode. And then come rain, drip rain, drip rain drops. You look at me and say, boy, isn't this just wonderful? 